the idea that something as basic as water is unsafe um, and you're being told it's unsafe and you've been told for decades it's unsafe and there's nothing you can do about it. It creates a whole culture of distrust in the community. It was sad to see our children, you know, having sores, the thinning of our dogs, their hair and stuff like that. Like, you could wash your clothes and in, you look inside your washing machine, you're like washing clothes in, in muddy water. No person deserves to live like that. In the case of Tlaatsin Nation, uh, Rezo came in quite a few years ago and just kind of started getting to know the community um, very slowly at first and kind of taking a tally of the water quality. From day one, they involved me in how I wanted to have the water cleaned. I wanted simple, I wanted something complicated. Came out with the IX and the other one we'd have to be regenerating once a week and with the BIX now we don't have to do that very often. It's safer for the environment and yeah. It's very hard to build stuff on a small scale. Larger scale different, but small scale no. So this is why we've wanted to do this in an innovative fashion and we are saving money here with this process and getting a product that is innovative and that the community totally buys into and our hope is that this is then long term sustainable. Because we're doing this, we have no issue saying to our, our management team and then through our region and back up to uh, Ottawa that this is a good way of doing business. This is probably one of the first times that I know of any way that a community circle has been used. I think it's important for the band to be given the information that what's going to be happening, what Rizzo needs to move forward on a design and how we can fulfill the needs of the community. It's really nice to communicate with people that understand the needs of our people and actual people that care. The whole point is that we're, we're trying to figure out how to get it right, how to actively engage with a community, engage with the youth, giving people um, an opportunity to have their say in kind of a different way and to give them a bit of a, a platform to use their voice for their own community and their own leadership. We're hoping 10 more houses up here, more kids up here, more kids in school. We're going to probably have a teacher, a store. There's plans for a store. Uh, we're getting new docks, more tourism. There's a lot of people want to move back into the community to, to live here year round. Down see that one's the river water and that's still there. Well, I gotta see. To see and to feel the greatness and gratitude of the people being able to sit there and tell us we are going to have water um, is just amazing. <laughs> like, I've never seen clean water here on my reserve since I was a child. and. To be able to share this glorious day with my children and for him to be able to grow up up here on our reserve with clean water means so much to us. My parents and my grandparents were never given opportunity to voice their concerns because of the residential prohibition. So our my generation is probably the first generation that that is taking part in making changes to, to how INAC and engineers and universities work on helping First Nations with their, the crisis that are in, and especially in the boiled water advisories.